Welcome back to the channel guys. Today is a highly requested video. It's something I get asked all the time and that is how do you switch from Mesh-tastic to Meshcore? With the growing improvements in Meshcore, it is light years ahead of Mesh-tastic. And yeah, you don't wanna miss out on what's been happening lately. It is just insanely good. So to start with, I'm gonna take probably one of the most popular devices for use with Mesh radio stuff. And that is the Heltec V3. So if we just fire this one up, we can see this one is currently a Mesh-tastic node. So we're gonna change that. We're gonna convert this into a Meshcore node. So I've already plugged it into the computer there. And the next thing I'm gonna do is head over to the Meshcore Flasher. So this is flasher.meshcore.co.uk. You can see that in the total bar up the top. And you're gonna to wanna to scroll down to Heltec V3. You can search for it in this little section here as well, whatever node you're gonna convert. So you wanna hit Heltec V3. Now the first big difference between Meshtastic and Meshcore is that there are individual firmwares for the type of role. So basically if you want to set up a repeater, you flash the repeater firmware. If you wanna use a USB client, you flash this one. If you want to connect to your phone by Bluetooth, you use this firmware here, Companion Radio Bluetooth. So just click on that and it will automatically go to the top firmware, which is the most latest. I would advise doing that. Click on the Arrays button here. Only use this Arrays for the first ever time you're doing it. And then just simply click on Flash and you can use the dialog that pops up in Chrome browser to select your node. If you don't know what which one it is, just literally unplug it and plug it back in and you'll see it pop up. So this is the one we want for the for the Heltec. Click on connect and that's all you gotta do. Just wait, wait it out, shouldn't take too long. The erase process takes a little bit of time. Depending on your device, it might take a bit longer. This one is looking like it's taking a little bit longer than normal, sometimes it goes quick. But don't worry about that, wait till that's finished. While that's doing that, we can open up our smartphone. I've got an Android smartphone here. Go to the Play Store, it's the quickest way to get the app and you can install the app very, very simply there. Just search for Meshcore, it'll come up. And you can also do this on iOS, obviously. It's exactly the same app on iOS. It looks the same, feels the same. There's no difference between the apps or anything like that, like there is on, on Meshtastic. So our flashing is complete. You can see that here, and you should see the device, the Heltec device, is booting up. It might say loading for a little while. This is the device generating its keys and setting the system up behind the scene. So just wait it out and then the logo will appear and that's it, you're basically done. And there's the Bluetooth pairing pin on the screen. So we're gonna open up our Meshcore app for the first time, allow it to send you notifications. You can do that if you want. And then we're gonna hit connect. We'll hit on allow on that. And then it will scan for devices and you'll see other devices that you've got. I've got this other one here as well. So this is the one we're interested in. I'm gonna tap on that and we should get a Bluetooth pairing um, dialogue come up. That's the Bluetooth code we're gonna to wanna to put in. So 676405, hit pair. And then it's gonna connect up and sync basically with the device. Now at this point, this is where you're gonna to wanna to configure the device. It's really simple, it's only a couple of settings. Hit the little cog item up the top here. First thing we're gonna do is put in a name. So I'm just gonna put in Andy here. Don't worry about any of the other, other settings at the moment, you can do this later on. And then we're gonna hit choose preset. Now this is the radio preset that you're gonna to wanna to use. So this is quite important. Going forward, the UK has switched to EU UK narrow. So you wanna use that. Click on that and it will basically do the settings and then you can hit tick up there. And that is basically it. So now it's just a waiting game to see what this actually picks up. Uh, Meshcore is very quiet on the airwaves. It won't transmit a lot of the time, so it will take quite a long time for you to see any activity in the area. That's one of the reasons why it's so efficient with bandwidth, it works very, very well because there's not lots of stuff flying around in the airwaves. But what you can do is you can hit this little button here and this will announce your presence. So it advertises your pre presence on the network. You want to use flood routed, hit that, and basically this is announcing you on the network. Now, if there isn't anyone around, then they're obviously not gonna pick you up, but the next best thing to do is to head on over to the public channel. So on Meshkor you have channels. The public channel is already configured. This is for everyone to use. It's like a global channel. And I would half expect in a minute, we'll probably see some messages come through because it's quite a busy mesh here. So hit public and you'll see no messages in there 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically fire out a message. So I'm gonna say, hi, testing for YouTube. If I can type it right, testing for YouTube. Oh, I really am useless. Um, so do that and then I'm gonna hit the send. So what you should hear is, is all my notes going off in the background. So ideally what you wanna be looking for is this heard three repeats or heard one repeat. And I'll come on to that in a minute. But basically that means you've been heard by something and it's forwarded it on to the network. And as you can see here, um, Tuck has come back replying to my message. So all is well and good, we are getting out. <laughs> so yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, we don't really have a, enough bandwidth for that. Um, but I'm just gonna say, hi guys, or thanks guys, send that out. So as you can see here, we're getting two repeats. So that effectively means that two things in the area have heard my message and then they forwarded, forwarded them on. And those are repeaters, basically. And I'll come on to how you would set a repeater up next. So at this point, it's worth mentioning another big difference between MeshCore and MeshTastic is that your node or your companion radio like this, which is connected to your phone, does not repeat any packets. So it's effectively like running in client mute mode in MeshTastic. Your client device will not repeat any packets. So when we see the repeats here, they are coming from repeaters and repeaters run on a completely separate firmware. Very streamlined, very power efficient. All they do is repeat data packets. So to set a mesh core repeater up, we take another Heltec V3. There's so many devices supported now, guys, so the chances are whatever MeshTastic device you're using will be supported by MeshCore. Anyway, so we're gonna head back over to the flasher and we're gonna scroll down to Heltec V3 again, click on that. And this time we're gonna use the repeater firmware. So click on the repeater firmware. So again, we're gonna hit Arrays device on this one, then Flash, then we are gonna select the CP2102, which is the Heltec V3, Connect and then Flash. So this is gonna go about its business, do its stuff. Right, so that's done and it is restarting. Now this will look slightly different on the screen to the companion. Um, we've got a please wait there. And it, when it finally boots up, so there we go, it says Heltec Repeater. Now don't disconnect it from the computer because you can see now what's appeared up here is a configure via USB button. This is so useful. So this allows you to configure your repeater um, using USB. So as soon as you've hit that, a window will pop up. It was slightly out of view. So click on connect, then click on your device again, and you should see the repeater configurator. So here you can set things like the repeater name. So I'm just gonna stick a, a test in front of that so we can identify it clearly. Test Heltec repeater, um, and then you wanna save settings. So that will save the settings to the device. You can also put in the repeater location. You can even use a visual map to basically place your point for your repeater and do that. We're not gonna do that in this particular one. You can set an admin password and a guest password. I'd advise just doing the admin password because guest access is quite handy for users. You just leave that blank and then anyone will be able to just log into the repeater. They won't be able to change any settings but they can get useful kind of signal information from that repeater um, which is quite useful for people. So if you leave that blank, that's kind of helping everybody out um, and basically set an admin password. So. So I'm just gonna stick in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, if you leave that blank, the default is password, just for, for reference. So the other thing we're gonna to wanna to do here is we are going to wanna change the preset to the UK narrow mode as well. So it matches our companion radio and that's pre-filled all those boxes. So just hit save settings and that will be applied. Now, you can also hit send advert here as well, which just announces your repeater um, on the network, same way as it does on the companions. And then you're good to go. You can just disconnect that from the computer or however you're gonna power this. That's obviously the next thing you have to think about if you're gonna put this up as a repeater. Most people stick these in the loft, run them off of like a big power bank or mains even if you've got it up there. Um, and you can then just connect you know, a decent antenna. That's not a decent antenna, that's the bare minimum. And that is a whole nother subject completely. Now it's worth noting at this point, you are gonna to wanna to do a power cycle or hit the reboot button in the configurator just so that it applies these new settings. Once that's rebooted, you should see like a white light come on probably on here any second now. Um, and that will basically be your repeater doing its advert. 
So that repeater has now appeared in our contacts. And there it is. So the cool thing about this now, guys, is you put this repeater somewhere else, um, it doesn't really matter where it is. You, you are able to then manage it through the MeshCore management system. So if you just tap on the repeater there, go manage. This point you can just wait 10 seconds to basically get into the repeater management uh, system, or you can donate five pounds to um, the developer of this app, which is Liam Cottle, who's done an absolutely amazing job. So this just helps to cover his work. You hit on continue if you wait, and then you'll get into the repeater login. Then we can put in our password one, um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, login and we should then get into the, the system. So now you can do everything that you can do in that repeater management um, in the app, which is really cool. Set position, do an advert, all these other things. It's a good idea at this point to hit the sync clock button because these things don't have clocks built in. So that will actually send your smartphone's time to the device. And every time you turn it off and reboot it, it's gonna reset that. So it's a good idea to do that, but not super essential. Now that you've got your repeater set up, it will mesh with other repeaters. So that's the mesh part of it. These don't mesh, but the repeaters do. So if there are other repeaters in the area, your new repeater here will mesh with those and expand the network. That's how MeshCore works so and that you don't have to do anything it will just do that completely automatically so guys i hope this has helped maybe you're in one of these areas where everybody's moved over to meshcore and you feel abandoned and you just want to get in on the action hopefully this video will have helped you um, get started with that it's really not a big learning curve you just got to get over the initial hurdle so meshcore is absolutely booming at the moment there's huge numbers of nodes and repeaters popping up everywhere and we are nearly at the point where we're can sort of connecting north and south of the UK so it won't be long before this happens but we do need obviously more nodes out there to more repeaters to help kind of bridge that gap this is something that just we haven't been able to do before um, with MeshTastic. It just didn't work because we just didn't have um, the ability to send messages reliably over, over many, many hops. Um, so this is something quite exciting um, that has never ever really been done before. And it's also going to help us learn how to optimize meshes in this, you know, in really, really busy environments because we all know the theory doesn't always work. You've got to try this stuff in practice. So yeah, guys, if you haven't already, give it a shot join our discord links below in the description and um, reach out in the comments if you've got any questions any if you need any help the community is brilliant it's so friendly and everybody's kind of just loves to just get involved with this stuff and just make the mesh better and what better time to be messing around with this sort of stuff when you know all this stuff's going on about privacy and the government and they're you know invading your phones with all these crazy things also another thing don't forget to subscribe to the official MeshCore channel um, I've been doing more stuff on this channel because it's got a bit more reach but I will be doing some more content on the official MeshCore channel once it starts sort of you know really taking off so yeah follow that channel get subscribed to that and you won't miss a beat when it comes to MeshCore. There are, of course, so many other things with MeshCore that I haven't covered in this video. DMs, for one, you know, tracing, all the cool stuff you can do with MeshCore. But I wanted to keep it simple, but it still ended up like nearly 15 minutes long. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Catch you next time.